Okay, we're back. Back from lunch. <coughs> Thank you, William Hamilton Morrow III. Uh, hopefully, our viewers will have seen you. <laughs> but I will see what happens later on with the editor. Um, editor of the, uh, you know, the people in charge of the, uh, our IT division here. <coughs> Gotta love it. Gotta love the furnace. Quiet throughout lunch. Now it's going to go on when we come back. Oh, Beelzebub is trying to stop us. Now, I made a new banner. You're going to love it. It says Progressive Warriors with two skull and crossbones on each side of the word warrior. But it is very aesthetically pleasing, pleasing to the eyeball. Eye candy. Eye no, candy, man. Not as not the same eye candy as, let's say, uh, Hustler magazine or Fox magazine, but eye candy, eye candy. I want to say uh, hello to my friend uh, uh, Peter Clausen of Bugs in Cyberspace. Greetings, and it's time. It's that time of year for the very finest in Irish imported gifts. Go to XavierGifts.com. Xavier, X A V uh, I E R, Gifts.com. Xavier Gifts. It's amazing how the X is pronounced like a Z, isn't it? All right, we're we're ready. <clears throat> Republicans have played with political fire these past seven years, exhorting their rank and file to despise the president as illegitimate, encouraging their animus toward the media, and totally obstructing any semblance of government that has enabled extreme vitriolic resentment and crudeness unlike anything seen before in American politics. And now we have the rise of a character like Donald Trump. I must say he's always been extremely entertaining. And he's even more entertaining now than, than ever before, since he got into politics. The, I'm having fun watching the Republican debates. The GOP is fearful. It will have no party. And that it will get burned because Trump's candidacy has upended the party. Good. Their pain is my pleasure. The Republican establishment, which has practice divisive politics through surreptitious dog whistle racism dating back to Richard Nickens, Nickens, Nixon's Nickers. Southern strategy. Richard Nixon's Where's Nickers? Is most concerned it has lost control of its divisive messages to a blowhard like Trump. Well, I guess, I guess him and Chris Christie are perfect together. It cares not a whit for America unless it reflects their ideology. The problem for the Republican Party is not so much what Trump says. The real issue is that he has given a loud voice to these decades-old political strategies, bringing bright sunshine to bear on the deep racial, economic, and bigoted resentment and fears that the GOP uses to divide people. And that is what has made the establishment Republicans fearfully uncomfortable. And it should make all of us fearful that we have allowed so many Americans to be left behind. Now 
Lord Hillary got upset about two when she was called be uh, being part of the establishment. I don't know uh, why Mitt Romney and John McCain are upset. I think that Republicans have the best man running on their ticket. Of course, I am a Democrat. Well, I think that I think that Trump is in certain areas of what he says are more to the left than many Republican politicians. Yes, but he but, he can't he can't say that. You see, because he's in a primary. He's trying he's to do right wing shit. He's trying to maximize as many votes as he possibly can. Because when they go back, they see that he was uh, for Planned Parenthood, gave it money, uh, for uh, uh, abortion, or the war right and the woman to choose, et cetera, et cetera. So he had a, a lot of liberal positions way back when. But he had to alter all of that to be successful in the primary, Republican primary. Speaking of um, Planned Parenthood, the egg salad that I had for lunch is the same as the same value as the fertilized egg in a womb. It is not a human baby, you morons, you evangelical freaks. Go ahead. This is what I heard on Thursday night at the end of the Republican debate. The reporter asked, will you support Donald Trump if he secures the Republican nomination? The candidate answered, well, let me see. I've called him a con artist and a fraud, a racist and a misogynist. I've said that his tax and trade plans will bankrupt America. And he has said that as commander-in-chief, he would order our troops to commit war crimes by murdering the children of terrorists, among other things. But, sure, I'll support him. Did they really say that? How could we support any of them? I think you're, you're, you hit the nail on the head before about um, Donald Trump, Trump having to sound more right-wing than he actually is. Yeah. Because he's campaigning in all those states where these people are still fighting the Civil War and they're, they're bigoted as all hell, terribly racist people. Yep. You know. Gun nuts. Clinging to their guns and religion. What about these states that want uh, minors to be able to carry oh, yeah, children? Can you imagine it? Oh yeah. Teacher, what? It, what? You want me to stay after class? Uh, you're uh, giving me extra homework. You failed. You f you gave me a, a D on my exam. Take this. Bang, uh, bang, 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 bang. There you go. Or if she's good looking, the kid will take the gun out and say, "Teacher." Uh, you're pretty hot looking. You see this gun? I want you to, uh, I want you to show me the ropes. Lock the door. To, to, you know what I mean? Like all kinds of things will happen when minors can carry. Well, and it's also, the, you know, it seems to me that uh, we have a big problem in this country and around the world, I guess, where people are too impulsive. Oh, forget so it, figure, especially if kids. They're, if they're packing and they're impulsive, that's a dangerous combination. Listen, if I if I seen fights bro break out, big barroom brawls in let's say a dance club where they're the, the the kids are like in their early twenties, you know, twenty one, twenty, whatever, twenty and every week there was a brawl. Can you imagine younger children being allowed to carry 
Handguns? Yeah, and usually the argument is over something silly. Legally? You know. People are dying over yeah. stuff. Yeah, oh, little, uh, oh, oh, I'm not the, uh, oh, you put me on the bench for Little League? Oh, yeah, take this. Boom, boom. I mean, it's going to be literal. It's going to be chaos. Literally chaos. It's going to be chaos. After Hillary Clinton built a commanding advantage <clears throat> in the Democratic race on Super Tuesday, some liberal forces that had been more sympathetic to Bernie Sanders appear ready to line up behind Clinton with an eye to the bigger looming challenge, Donald Trump. Although voters in dozens of states have yet to cast ballots, and Sanders has amassed a significant campaign war chest on the strength of his grassroots appeal, Democrats appear more eager than ever to close ranks at a time when Republican divisions are only deepening. Even as Clinton was sweeping to victory in delegate rich states Tuesday, building an advantage Sanders is increasingly unlikely to reverse, some progressive groups began to realign their messages. Progressive groups? First of all, Hillary is not progressive. These people, man, unbelievable. MoveOn.org, which has formally endorsed Sanders, spent as much of its statement on Tuesday's primaries warning about the threat posed by Trump as it did praising the potency of Sanders' message. Trump will and I repeat, will destroy and tear apart Hillary Clinton in any debate and in any election. You don't want Hillary to win the nomination. Now, uh, if they're calling themselves progressives and they're jumping ship and aligning themselves with Hillary, they're not real progressives, you know. So. If Trump is the Republican standard bearer, it will be crucial for progressives and all Americans to unite to defeat the man who represents the antithesis of everything our nation stands for, said MoveOn.org's executive director, Ilya Scheiman. Scheiman? Scheiman. Here we go. Or Shaman. Take your choice. Oh, it reminds me of these uh, these true blue Democrats that say they'll vote for anybody in the Democrat any anyone who wins the Democratic nomination, either one, the, 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 either one like they're both similar. They're not. They're not. Hillary is not progressive at all. Another group that styles itself as representative of liberal Democrats, the Progressive Change Campaign Committee said, Sanders had made Clinton a stronger candidate. The characterization seemed to imply that Sanders' challenge had served its purpose by putting Clinton clearly on record in support of the issues that motivate their activist base. Adam Green, co-founder of the committee, said that Sanders had helped ensure that the Center for Gravity in the Democratic Party has shifted to the left, to what he called its Elizabeth Warren wing. After the Massachusetts Senator he said Sanders' challenge pushed Clinton to take more definitive positions on issues like Wall Street reform that she might have otherwise than she might have otherwise. 
On the one hand, it's a blessing to the overall war and wing of American politics. But it also has blunted the distinction that Sanders might have had. Sanders's campaign insisted Wednesday that the Vermont senator still had a path to the nomination. But Sanders's hope of fighting through to the end of primary season, it's including California in June, it's a massive hall of delegates. Sounds like more of a fantasy, said Douglas Herman, a Los Angeles-based Democratic political consultant who worked on President Obama's campaign. This guy is in the final stages of the Sixth Sense movie, Herman said. He doesn't know his campaign is dead. I wouldn't call it dead, but I, I, I will say that Elizabeth Warren should have um, uh, had consultations with Bernie Sanders to help him in his plan of attack and publicly endorse him and, and campaign for him. She hasn't done a damn thing, so I'm just wondering, you know, um, since uh, she became senator, did she <laughs> did she take large campaign contributions, and uh, or maybe she's a um, she's a closet uh, feminist that uh, cares too much about putting a woman in the White House than we think. I don't understand why Elizabeth Warren procrastinated so long about supporting Bernie Sanders and helping him out. Um, I think it would have been a huge asset. Bernie Sanders, what I said a long time ago, because old James O has a very sharp, keen sixth sense or, 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 or uh, uh, um, ta uh, I mean intuition. My intuition is uncanny and, uncanny and accurate. I have hunches that come true and I said a long time ago after the first debate with Hillary that Bernie Sanders his ultra liberal <laughs> pacifism will be his downfall and uh, him him not proactively going for Hillary's jugular vein <laughs> is making him lose and his um, his grassroots revolution needs a totally different fertilizer to bring it back to life. Enough said. The call for unity against Trump is going to be so important I don't see how Bernie can keep staying out there and saying he's a viable candidate. Democrats sense that they must unite was evident beyond Tuesday's presidential primaries. Obama made unusual endorsements in two key contested Senate primaries on Wednesday. Florida and Ohio, states where party unity in the full will be essential to the Democratic ticket. It's a particular concern as turnout in the Democratic primaries has been dwarfed by that on the Republican side and has lagged well behind record-setting numbers in the 2008 nomination race. While House Press Secretary Josh Ernest said this vote this week, there were no plans for Obama to endorse in the nomination fight, though he will cast an absentee ballot in March 15th Illinois primary. Both Secretary of State Clinton and Senator Sanders, regardless of the final outcome here, have succeeded in motivating a significant portion 
of the Democratic Party to support their campaign hmm. and the unity of the Democratic Party will be critical to our success in the general election. Green said that even as progressives begin to consider the prospect of a general election campaign, what has been good politics for the nominee in the primary will continue to be good politics in the fall. If the net effect of Bernie Sanders staying in is that Hillary Clinton is speaking even more convincingly on the need to hold the Wall Street accountable, that only helps her in the general election. And she can she can flip flop on all the issues she wants. Uh, uh, the main thing is that her track record. Uh, mm -hmm. Her track record is pro corporate, pro Wall Street, pro Goldman Sachs, yeah. and uh, pretty much uh, sounding like a Republican. Not mm -hmm. like not like not like a um, progressive. Um, are you questioning my integrity? Yes. Oh. You see, I don't know. Bernie folded like a cheap camera when she, when she when she raised her voice and, and made that statement. I would have said, "Yes, I am questioning your integrity, and here's why," and then proceed with the facts. But he wants to be a uh, uh, pacifist. Uh, you know, he wants to be like a flower child from the 60s and not go after Hillary in an aggressive manner. And Hillary goes after him and aggressively and hits him below the belt. And uh, that's that. That's that's that. Uh, I don't know. Now, if Bernie runs, if he doesn't get the nomination and he runs as an independent, that that means he's serious, you know. And of course, I'll vote for him. Uh, now, if he doesn't run as an independent, I don't know quite how serious his intentions are if people write him in, because he could very easily run as an independent. Uh, Jesse Ventura claims he's going to jump in, but Jesse Ventura. He flip flops. He's you know, first he's a, a liberal, libertarian. Then he he's a moderate libertarian. What is is you know he's he's not in favor of Sanders uh, socialism. Then he is in favor. He's a, he just jumps around too much. Flip flops. So I don't know where he's coming from. One has to wonder if we are experiencing a déjà vu as our national election unfolds. Karl Marx noted that history repeats, first as tragedy, second as farce. The German philosopher and revolutionary socialist was apparently a fortune teller too. Few probably remember the very early roots of the Deutsch Arbeiterparty. What? Or the German Workers' Party. When an impressionable individual became enamored of the party's anti Semitic, nationalistic ideals, that individual was Adolf. Hitler. Today, we have a Republican candidate feeding on anti-immigrant nationalistic ideals and accepting endorsements from literally anybody to feed an insatiable ego. And a Democratic candidate who denounces the evils of Wall Street capitalism promising government will provide free college uh, education, 
great jobs, health insurance, here, here. and full security upon retirement. Seven bells for all of that. Hey, Scandinavia's been doing it for a long time. We're too poor. We're, we're too poor country. We can't do that. Oh yeah, you know what some Republicans say? Oh, we're too. We're much more highly populated than any Scandinavian country. We're, we're we it can't be. But done, all but things are relative. Okay. Yeah, there's more rich people to pay taxes. Exactly. <laughs> it's, it, 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 it's a, if the country is so big, population-wise, etc., they should have more money. That means more money. Things. That means more tax money. Exactly. The fact is, the stingy, greedy fucks don't um, want to pay it. There you go. There yeah, it's relative. Go. Exactly what you said. Yeah. That's great. All we have to do is be born. Collectively, these two candidates provide history's repetition as a farce. Farce. The country is dumbing down. Oh, yeah. And participating in a national interactive reality TV program being broadcast worldwide. You like that banner of the whole, the whole family that was obese? The dumbing down of America? And, and it had, like, real stupid people. Look at, you know... It's as if oh, God. political showmanship were inspiring supporters to mindlessly act like a Reichstag, quietly instituting their version of the Enabling Act of 1933. Well, they do act like the Reichstag uh, crowd, uh, the Trump supporters. <laughs> Politically, elections are perennial affairs. They have evolved into live theater. Glib tongues and performance seemingly matter more than appropriate knowledge and ability. Each election adds to the cacophony of change in America, where voters are blind to their own culpability. It makes some high for the good old days. Excuse me, sigh for the good old days. When all one's senses were in alignment, and many knew an outhouse when seen and smelled. That's some heavy duty uh, readings here. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm very happy you, you encountered them from the original Osprey article. Very it, good. It, it is easy to understand why Governor Christie would endorse whomever he perceived as the front runner for the Republican nomination. Mm -hmm. It is in order to keep himself in the national limelight and to further his personal ambitions. People are saying that he has endorsed Donald Trump in return for Trump selecting him as a running mate. If this is so, it is difficult to fathom why Trump who boasts of being a brilliant businessman, would select for his running mate the seriously flawed governor of New Jersey. In previous statements, Trump has criticized Christie's dismal record and even said he believed that Christie was probably more involved in the George Washington Bridge scandal than he claimed. Why would Trump choose anyone at this early stage, particularly a candidate who was soundly rejected in the early primaries and who is poorly supported in his home state. Oh, he is? Poorly supported? They yeah, re-elected him. Now, now, oh, now he's poorly, poorly supported. supported. Yeah. Now. You couldn't be, he couldn't be poorly supported when Barbara Bono ran against him. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. Barbara Sonabono. It is Bono. obvious that Christie is piggybacking his way onto the national stage. He's going to break Donald Trump's back. He's piggybacking him. And perhaps even planning a way through a black back door into a future presidential run. Yeah. Hopefully he'll be a lot thinner then. 
In any case, one thing is certain. <coughs> Christie no longer has New Jersey's interests in the forefront. Even though he claimed to, uh, in his speech here in New Jersey, the, um, the, bu the budget speech on the budget, yeah, he's, you know, he's, he sounds